Hello, welcome to theCUBE's International Women's Showcase. Featuring International Women's Day, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California. And we have three great guests videoing in from Kuala Lumpur, as well as Bangkok, Joanne Kwa Group, CEO of KSK Group. There's your sister Christina Kwa, co-founder and head of KSK City Labs, and Cindy Kwa, co-founder of Sunday Insurance in Bangkok. Ladies, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for, thanks for joining me on this special day. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so for much for having us. You guys are three sisters trailblazing in the insurance and real estate through digital transformation in the cloud, taking a three decade old family business to the next level, raising the bar as they say in the cloud business. Congratulations. Tell us how it all started. What's going on now? What does it look like? Where did it come from? Tell the story. Okay, so maybe I'll start, uh, you know, since I'm, I'm at the uh, group CEO level. So, um, as a quick introduction, you know, KSK Group, uh, we are about 30 years old now as a group, three decades. Um, we started off as an insurance, uh, non-life insurance uh, company. Um, and then over the years, um, you know, we, we operate in, in Southeast Asia. So we are uh, based in the ASEAN markets that West Indies also sitting in. Um, and uh, very quickly over the years, you know, we decided to actually venture into property development as well. Um, and really across the journey, um, you know, we, we've always been very um, obsessed over the customers, you know, uh, and, you know, during this time and age, you know, all the customers are really digital natives now and, and you know, the tech is very, very interesting. And, and so, so starting in the year of 2017, we decided um, to actually venture, Cindy and I at least, we decided to, to start up our own um, uh, insure tech uh, called Sunday. Uh, Cindy is now the full-time CEO and, and we're both co-founders. Um, and, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting journey from then on. Uh, we're now the, the, the first full-stack insure tech in, in the whole of the ASEAN market, uh, starting off in Thailand. Um, and then when Christine came back to join the business, you know, since we were already in real estate, we decided taking on from the inspiration of what we did with Sunday, how about we do the same in, in, in property? Um, because we obviously saw, you know, there was super loads of opportunities that we could, we could, we could do. And, and, and a year ago, we gave birth to KSK City Labs, um, now a prop tech company uh, based in Malaysia. Yeah. Christine and Cindy, tell the story here because this is, actually a fascinating story. You're th sisters, you're entrepreneurial. So you know each other, you're related and you've got ups and downs with the startups and growing companies, changing landscape, a lot of challenges. You all got to get along all the time. How's it going? What's it like? Maybe I'll start. I think, I think for me, um, I'm probably the newest addition to the trio in the, you know, working together kind of space. So for me, I think um, it's all about really learning how to, you know, separate your professional and personal life. But right? like you mentioned, you know, we live together, but we also work together. So for me, I think I took a lot of advice and direction, um, both from really? Joanne and Cindy, oh and she helped me a lot. Um, so, so I think that's been, that my experience been great so far. Um, they've been really, really supportive. And I think going through this journey of, you know, like founding a company together, it's obviously very challenging. And so I feel very fortunate to have two sisters who have already gone through it once, you know? So it's, like we need another screen great. for that other guest that's trying to get on the cube here over there. Um, <laughs> sounds like fun. Uh, Christine, so on the City Labs, you got an tech side of it there and the, and the property tech. That's exciting. Yeah. How, how, how's it going over there? Uh, super, super cool, super fun. Uh, it's been one heck of a journey building a company from scratch, uh, let alone in tech. I think, you know, we created KSK City Labs because we really wanted to modernize the real estate industry uh, and create like super transformative solutions, uh, mainly for two reasons. You know, one is to improve the quality of lives um, of the community around us. Uh, and secondly, really to harness all the technology and this unused data, right, in the real estate industry and try and say, hey, how can we use that to make more intelligent business decisions? Yeah, so, so really, um, I guess for us, it's been really exciting because we've launched uh, two products, uh, you know, one of which uh, is uh, AI driven dynamic pricing engine. And we realized that actually the way that homes are priced today uh, in real estate is super archaic, right? You only use few basic variables like how big is your house? Uh, what views do you have? 
But then we realized that actually, hey, with AI, we suddenly can use like hundreds of variables um, yeah. and even, you know, consisting of wellness variables, for example. Um, and we can really customize pricing all the way down to a single unit level. Uh, and, and we realized that by doing this, we could actually unlock um, fair prices for our customers while also constantly kind of tracking the financial health of the, the company. That's yeah. awesome. Cindy, I want to get you in here. I co-founder of Sunday Insurance. That was the origination, but a lot's changed. Data drives everything, machine learning. You got to have the state of the art. What's going on with you? Yeah, I think uh, for us, uh, essentially, uh, we're operating in a very old industry. Um, it's one of the oldest industries globally. And um, if you look at the entire insurance value chain, um, every part of the process can actually, it's, it's all about data. You can, you, um, it can be disrupted, um, but yet every inch of the value chain is also regulated. So I think essentially what we're trying to do is um, we're, uh, we're trying to really innovate the customer journey. So imagine if, um, even in the States now and even coming back to Asia, a lot of uh, how people buy insurance is still very face-to-face -face agency. But I think in the future, it's going to be remote, online, uh, on your app, uh, through any partners as well. So I think uh, we're trying to adopt um, any AI machine learning uh, to really scale and automate uh, the journey of anyone who's trying to buy insurance. But at the same time for insurance companies, uh, we're also trying to help them automate that function itself. So imagine if banks are trying to dish out loans and you're trying to predict what's the credit risk of every um, single customer, that's exactly what um, insurance company needs to do as well. Um, and I guess insurance is all about buying a service as well. Um, it's unlike, you know, when I buy an Apple, it comes with a hardware. <laughs> so, right, so we're selling a service. So essentially your service has to also dramatically change. And I think these days, um, especially when we're operating in um, markets like ASEAN, uh, Thailand, um, Indonesia is one of the highest adoption rates for mobile these days. Everyone does everything, lives on, on the app. So um, insurance companies also needs to really onboard their journey on that as well as increased engagement. So I don't just want to be an insurance company where um, I speak to you when I have an issue with my claim. I want to really build a relationship with you and engage you differently. So I think essentially that's the mission for Sunday. So I think imagine if, um, imagine an insurance company 50 years in the future, how would it be? Yeah. Uh, so, so that's our mission. Sure, this is a great example. You guys, first of all, you're very dynamic. Thanks for sharing your story. But when you get into the, the tech here, if industries yeah. that are transforming because of the digital transformation, the, the consumers expect the apps, you guys as co-founders and entrepreneurs now running this big business have to meet the demands and leverage the technology. Mm -hmm. How have you done that? How have you guys managed that? What kinds of decisions have you made? Can you share some either experiences or observations of how to navigate and how you're riding that wave? Yeah, so I think if you hear from what uh, Cindy and Christine has just mentioned, I mean, uh, uh, we we are playing in, you know, two of the oldest and largest uh, industries in the world, real estate and insurance. And, uh, you know, in both uh, these industries, uh, as I said earlier, you know, it's really all about the customers, right? Um, you know, in, in the past, we used to think of, of businesses as, you know, what's your vertical and your horizontals. Today, um, at least for KSK and 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 all the all these um, you know tech ventures that we are now venture building, we're really thinking about it from uh, the customer lens. So really thinking about it from a customer ecosystem perspective. So instead of you know creating products and and having that push out to the customers, you know we use tech and data and and especially data today and the right amount of data and what type of data that we want, um, understanding that and really. Um, building that product and really the services uh, for the customer. So once, you know, the customer enters our ecosystem, whether, you know, it's in your real estate um, ecosystem or whether it's in your insurance ecosystem, we want you to, to continue to stay with us um, and to trust us. Um, and so it's not just about selling you a product, but really, you know, like what Cindy says, building a relationship with you uh, because we think that, you know, obviously, you know, when you, insurance is something you really need when, when, when things go wrong in your life, uh, we don't only want to be there when things go wrong in your life. And for real estate, you know, everybody needs a, a shelter. So, so, so that's why we think that building relationships are very important. And from really through that lens is, 
when you really think about the ecosystem and you think about data, I think Cindy and Christine gave some examples of how we're approaching it. Um, a lot of people start from, 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 a, you know, from a traditional business and from within, but for us, um, we decided to actually take it outside um, and, and, and you know, take the approach of venture building uh, from a startup, um, but really have uh, on the back end, really have that connection to the core businesses because what the core businesses understand is, you know, lifetime and experience of how customers feel and, and you know, um, in insurance, it's really about how to run a financial institution. In real estate, it's really how to build buildings. And that is something that we can't take away, but you know, you use technology to enable and to power. But what uh, venture and startups do extremely well is really the way we're extremely nimble in the way you use tech and data to navigate the quick changes of customer demands and and you know, one thing, an app, and it's all about quick iterations, right? When you build a super app, how do you iterate all the features that are coming in? You have to keep on, you know, iterating, changing, innovating, um, and innovating small with quick wins, and then taking on a larger scale. And so, the way we position ourselves is when you have the startup and you combine that with the, with the, with the core, um, and putting the two together is how 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 we look at things, and that formulates the whole ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And, and being agile as fast and speed is key if you want to be that startup, yeah. but yet the core business, that's going kind of slow. You got to kind of make everything go faster. That's a great, great insight. Let's talk about the disruption of the property industry. Again, that's real estate. Yeah. Now with the internet of things, technology is, and also people expect technology. They want to have access. They don't want to have all these passwords and you know, they want to have easy in and out. They want good efficiency, save money. What's the disruption angle on um, the, the the property tech, uh, Christine? What, what's your, what's how do you see the the big disruption going? Yeah, so I think um, as Joanne like already mentioned before, you know, um, I think our customers we know are becoming um, digital natives, right? And they expect very convenient lifestyles and we're all about our customers. So actually that's why we launched also another product, right? Where we're taking all of these things that you just mentioned, you know, about IoT into account. So what we found is um, that actually today, um, you know, the beauty about real estate is that we all live through that life as well. So we can experience that. Uh, and we found that residents today, um, they find it quite challenging to request, you know, basic services like housekeeping, managing um, their defects, their tenants, um, you know, even the financial planning and even getting into the building, right? They want more convenience. Um, but all, we, we realized that actually um, all these services in the real estate industry right now, and even in the prop tech space, they're very, um, they're very segmented. They're all dispersed across multiple different apps. So what we really tried to do is, hey, let's try and consolidate all of this into one single app, which we have done, um, which is really cool. Um, and it helps our residents really stay engaged and connected with our property. Um, what we did also was on the IoT front, we, we were actually the first um, developer in Malaysia to also integrate you know, future-proof solutions like uh, remote lift calling as well um, into the mobile app. And that's to really go like push on the IoT front for us as well. Yeah. Must be great for retention. It's all the gadgets are built into the, into the you know, of course you have good Wi-Fi exactly. fiber in there. Everyone's got you know, good bandwidth. For sure, definitely we have to. <laughs> it's like water and, and plumbing. Uh, oh, I like to get exactly. that and everyone, everyone loves that. I got to ask now on the, dis on, the, on, the, um, on the disruption is great. Now you got the cloud. So the cloud's here for you, actually Amazon, you guys are a big customer because you guys can move fast and do, they do all the heavy lifting. Um, how are you guys seeing that help modernizing the industry of insurance? Because that's a big vertical for AWS and you guys are doing it. Cindy, what is the, what is the modernization um, path that you guys have taken with AWS. Yeah, sure. So I think um, essentially for insurance, it's a product development. And when we talk about product development, it means um, how do you price um, every certain individual or company very differently, right? Because everyone has very different risks surrounding them. Uh, currently what we face is that it's a flat pricing, fixed pricing, um, and uh, it, it's not really personalized to you. Uh, if you are very good behavior and safe kind of customer. It doesn't translate to any premium savings for you. Um, so I think uh, part of insurance is to give, for example, affordable access to healthcare, but if your premiums isn't sustainable for health insurance, then it doesn't really meet the point. So 
uh, for Sunday, like how we're trying to trying to do it differently is, for example, we use um, AWS um, cloud solutions and AWS Lambda to uh, really power our machine learning serverless and cloud infrastructure. So, for example, uh, uh, at Sunday, uh, we are a Series B company, so we're in a growth stage. So at any point in time, we need to ensure that our infrastructure is able to support um, a, a huge spike in transaction volume when we're working with uh, large-scale partners like telcos, e-commerce companies, or even within our organic channels. Um, so our um, AI machine learning risk prediction model, which is basically um, powering our premium pricing engines, uh, whenever there's any request coming in from a web uh, for, for a quotation, for example, if someone wants to buy health insurance, um, it can go up in spike, uh, but also the the the, the the data model is actually pricing, uh, pro processing billions of calculations, ingesting a lot of data points, uh, and, it's, and it needs to do that within seconds. So yeah, I think AWS, we've been using it um, from day one since we launched. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, helping us on that. And make you go faster, that's that big thing. I got to ask you, uh, when you guys have this family business now three decades, you got a lot going on, extending that legacy and sustaining the family legacy. I love the story. So who decides whether to do the startup? And you guys draw straws? Is it, uh, you guys flip a coin? You got to, you know, you know, who runs the big business? How do you guys decide that? Um, maybe I'll <laughs> You don't have to answer. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, I would say maybe it came very naturally to us, really. Uh, I guess here we didn't have to disclose our ages a little bit. So, I mean, uh, I mean, we all actually the, the background is really all three of us before we came into the family business. We, we were all working professionals in very different fields. I was a, I was in banking. Cindy was a lawyer, and uh, Christine was a, uh, a doctor actually. Um, uh, but you know, I came back first. I'm the eldest, so. Uh, after you know working outside and and looking into the family business, so I came back first, and 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 from there I took over the insurance business and looking at it, it was a very lonely place to be. So um, you know after a couple of years of Cindy being in professional life, you know we said, hey, would you like to come back and let's uh, take a different journey with insurance and see how we can build something different uh, since we know a lot about insurance, but let's make 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 a difference and 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 you know be sustainable, but also evolve over time and show the world that insurance is actually pretty sexy, actually. Yeah. Um, and then you know Christine saw the fun that the two of us were having, <laughs> uh, and at that time we had already started building a real estate on on my end. Uh, and then uh, she came back and and you know we had a conversation and we said, look, looking at you know what we're doing in Sunday, you know building pricing engines and being able to price to a single customer level, um, we saw that opportunity in real estate. And uh, so I asked her, I said, look, would you like to do this? You know, because I think there is something cool. Um, the three of us can band together and still inspire each other, uh, share ideas across each other. That's an opportunity that a lot of people don't get, right? I mean, two oldest industries in the world being able to cross share ideas. Uh, and sometimes inspirations and ideas don't come from the same industry. Uh, and so I think, and that's how we started really. John, it's, it's yeah. not, um, maybe we're lucky and we should be grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're all power women. I love the story. And this is good that they come together. And I think the entrepreneurial kind of twist makes it more fun, but not everyone's cut out for the entrepreneurship, but it also gives you more uh, risk management. You can you can go after opportunities. And I love, I love the strategy there. You guys are, are great leaders. Any advice for uh, other uh, aspiring women leaders and entrepreneurs out there who want to make a difference, make an impact. Um, the world is changed, it's getting better for everyone. And, and again, entrepreneurial could be in big companies and also big companies doing startups as a whole new world. What advice would you guys give other aspiring women leaders? Uh, I'll keep it short from my end. I think for me, it's about really following your passion following your ambition. And lastly, I think not to try and con not tr not feel like you need to conform to any gender stereotypes, because I think in male dominated industries, such as real estate or, or tech, I think people might have some ideas about, you know, what a, what a tech leader or what a real estate leader might have to look like, um, but you don't have to conform to that. So that's probably my advice. 
Yeah, I, I fully agree with, with Chris right there. I think um, gender isn't an issue here. Uh, if you have a passion and you identify there is a market opportunity that you can, you, you know, you can really uh, do something about it, just, just pursue it. I think most importantly, um, if you ever want to be an entrepreneur and start your own business or your own startup, uh, so long as you have the confidence, uh, I, I think you're, you're good to go. Um, there's a lot of talk out there that, oh, you know, um, women-led startups are not attracting funds, uh, but we haven't faced that um, anyway in this part of Asia. I think there's a lot of, um, I think it attracts even more attention if you're a woman in a male-dominated yeah. um, industry, like, hey, then, you know, it's, it's quite unique. Uh, so, so I think you have a strength there. And I think there's a lot of diverse talent out there. Um, post-pandemic, a lot of people are looking for changes um, as well. So I, I think it's, it's, it's a lot of a, a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah. Yeah. And Joanne, you know, you know, the thing is with cloud computing, it's a level setter. It really, because if you can come together, whether it's sisters like you guys, powerful sisters and professional experience, coming together to leverage technology to refactor old industries, it's all about the numbers and the performance. At the end of the day, you know, you move faster and you take territory and beat the competition. That's you know, right. The ultimate, yeah. <laughs> the ultimate uh, uh, leveler. Well, congratulations. Yeah. You guys are great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. The Quas sisters, you guys are amazing. Great story, love it. Thanks for coming on and celebrating International uh, Women's Day feature today. It's part of our International Women's Showcase here on theCUBE. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, the, the Cube's International Women's Showcase going on all year, this time featuring International Women's Day, a big celebration. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube here in Palo Alto, California. Thanks for watching.